as a, as a student of the talk show game, <clears throat> one of the coolest things anyone's done, and they happen to be a friend of mine, Funk, uh, was, had a faux feud with Stephen Colbert. That's right. Yeah, that was, man, that's, that's getting to be a while ago. But yeah, I did that once. We've been on some talk shows. We've rumbled. Wait, tell me, how does the rumble with Colbert come to be? He's in character at that point in time, doing the Colbert Report. It's 2006. Uh, you have some feud with him that is this kind of continuous bit that culminates in a guitar battle. Um, and then Peter Frampton's involved. Tell, just give me the, from origin to completion, that story. Yeah. I think we were we were fans of the show and the show had just come out and um, we had shot a video sort of based on the concept of his green screen challenge or we mm. asked um, I think it was fans to create or no we had shot a video on green screen that we weren't quite happy with so we then we lifted his idea and said let's do the green screen challenge ourselves and then he caught wind of it and um, brought, you know, brought it to light on the, on his show. And long story short, we, you know, came back and challenged him to a challenge because he was kind of like taking the piss out of us about his idea. Style. Yeah. So we didn't actually think he'd respond. And then I was sent in to, um, see what would happen. And happen it did. Did you, happen did, it did. He, he came out with like, what was like five guitar, like a, like, a five guitar, how would you even call that thing? Uh, I would call that the, the Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick Weapon of Destruction. Oh, oh! <laughs> Which of course he couldn't play, but then he brought in Peter Frampton to battle was, you because he sprained his wrist, I think. Yeah, he, he, he was injured and I think it was a tie, so. Well, it's a good turn. I mean, look, and it's, it's to be honest, there's no dueling banjos uh, against a kid mayor from a town of 2,000 people uh, in Central Oregon. But, but I, wa I want to touch about something else with Colbert, which is you were up for the job of band leader for it, the it late show. A, it was a consideration, yeah. You it are in, a, uh, Yeah, I, I went out and... Got it. But there was a short list, and yeah. you were on that list. Yeah, I actually just listened to John Baptiste's uh, performance from the Newport Folk Festival from a few years ago. I think it was yesterday, and I was like, no question that John Baptiste should have got that gig. That guy's insane. He's so amazing. Um, but yeah, it was cool to you know to think about it and and be in the running. So, was there an yeah. audition? I mean, was there actually? Were you in New York? Did you have a band together that you got to like test off of uh, with with Stephen? No, it was just like uh, meeting with his team and chatting with them about it. And they're like, okay, cool. Maybe that'll work. And then they find this guy, John Baptiste, who can hardly play the piano at all. And he gets the gig. Right. Do you ever, th <laughs> do you ever think what your life would have been like? I mean, do you call Nate in this situation? Say you get it. Are you calling Nate like, we're going to New York, Nate? I'm in charge <laughs> now. Take that call. <laughs> Nate, Nate, Nate would have been in the band. Uh, because Nate often does a lot of these band scrambles and moments like Newport Folk where, where you know, we could have put a band together and Nate's such a great bass player. Um, he probably would have been the bass player. So Nate would have been in New York. We would have been in New York. We'd be out celebrating right now without coronavirus. We wouldn't be stuck here. <laughs> 